a main focus. So, hello there. This is the second episode of Master What You Already Have with Coca. Still no better title. Now, if you want to skip me talking and see the deluge workflow part, please use a time tag in the description below. This episode is primarily for creative individuals interested in Synthstrom Deluge and humanizing beats. By the way, since the previous episode, I actually practiced how to pronounce Deluge. I thought it would be so great if you could send me a short video of you saying hello Coca in some creative, funny way. That would be a massive contribution to my boring intro. I would say this is master what you already have with Coca and then a couple of audience members would say hello Coca in some creative, funny way. And in order to kickstart this initiative, authors of the first three videos that Coca receives will be able to get a free one-hour Zoom lesson with Coca about making electromechanical music with physical objects, using microcontrollers with Deluge and with Live, using solenoids, motors, etc. The lesson will cover all basics you need to know to start involving electromechanics in your workflow. Just say hello, Coca, in some creative way. It doesn't need to be high quality or something. Just say hello, Coca, and send it over to me. Email in the description below. I should stop doing this. I'm taking YouTube seriously. I bought myself additional gear. I invested in studio lighting. I made myself a little YouTube home studio. By the way, this is how you subscribe to my channel. Look at your subscribe button. Grab a hammer. <laughs> Winters are dark in Norway. I will need my home studio a lot. And I worked hard on preparing the second episode. I scripted for five days, generated half a terabyte of video material, only to realize that instead of producing a YouTube episode that I originally had in mind, I basically ended up with a 45-minute philosophy lecture. To live or to deluge? That is the question. And yes, I'm using a dismantled prototyping breadboard as my pop filter. It's a great pop filter because of how it's shaped. If you angle it correctly, it will actually compete with some of the most expensive pop filters out there. I talked about the experiential part when using life and when using deluge. I took a phenomenological turn, whatever the f*** that means. I talked about how my homeland, Georgia, looked like when I was a baby coker. How streets were dark and full of terror, and how my very first computer with a version of life turned into a holy place where I often escaped. I talked about how versions of life kickstarted generations of musicians like me, some even so that now we can afford life. Then I talked about how I turned into Ableton Life Hater during my composition studies, where I tried to position myself as an intellectual musician. Such a dick. Live was a program that allowed little children without music education produce great music. That was horrifying. And then how I turned back into an active live user when I got featured by Ableton at Loop, when I met hundreds of brilliant, talented people using live in so many different ways. Every moment of my presence there was like, Holy Jesus, you exist. Holy Jesus, you exist. I then talked about how life became new normal. Then Deluge. I discussed how Deluge's physical presence in our three-dimensional world matters a lot, without romanticizing anything. Human body and human senses have been evolving over hundreds and thousands of years and are optimized for this strange, chaotic, three-dimensional world where people live, people die, and nobody understands what the f*** is going on. I talked about how Deluge brought more order to my life and how it framed my creative play constructively. I talked about how most of the time it's not the overwhelming resource that ignites creativity, but it's the limitation that ignites it. And then I discussed how Deluge is not limited at all. Master it. It's probably the best hardware sequencer out there with some amazing features. Just the right amount of limitation, I think. I brought this personal example. This is Blinkwheel.
it's a mechanical step sequencer I made several years ago just to limit myself in engineering and transforming simple patterns. It has kept me in the flow state for impressive number of hours. I'll upload a short demonstration as a separate video, the one after this. The point of my deleted lecture was that whenever you, a creative individual, use your analog or digital circuitry to produce music, you yourself are the most important, the most essential part of the circuit. And your experience matters a lot. I also talked about some other things and then at the end when I reviewed my material, I realized that I disagreed with myself in quite a few points. That was embarrassing. So I got angry and I ditched the material. I formatted the hard drive. Fuck. No, I actually love such moments. When I work on something for days and days and days and I genuinely believe I'm producing something awesome until one day I wake up and realize I want to throw away 97% of my work. It, it's like catharsis. The moments when frustration and joy dance on a tiny piece of progress and then i know i'm doing it right do you work the same way if you do please engage in the comment section below let's talk about it there is nothing better in this world than interesting and inspiring threads like that smoking break from four to five in the morning streets of oslo feel like mine I can sit wherever I want and nobody cares. Great things have happened since the previous episode. I received a good amount of positive feedback and my channel has gained up to 300 new subscribers in just several days. That's a lot of people. My friends asked me to show my face. So here it is. This is my face. Sky said you might need more cuts to keep the visuals engaging. So besides all the other cuts, here are some more cuts. My mother called me and she said she did not understand a single word. She does not speak English. So from today on, I will have to do this in Georgian. No, I won't. My dearest wife, Mariam, said I'm a little too stiff. But I'll improve, I promise. It takes a lot of exercise. It's only the second time I'm doing this. Let's go back inside. Am I in focus? Now, let's creep into the deluge workflow part. For quite a while now, I've been obsessed with engineering statistical beats. Short, two, three, four, six, eight beat self-grooving statistical models that have enough inertia to last me for one entire track. And I love humanizing beats. It is a highly satisfying process when you nudge things around, randomize stuff. But my problem has been that I've been losing clarity of mind in a snap. So it has happened to me multiple times that I worked for many hours without clear, structured workflow. And then the next morning I was like, Jesus Christ, did I really like that? Yes, you did! So, clear structure and organized workflow make a big difference. And this structure works for me. D, T, C, T, S. Dynamics, timing, chance, timbre, space. And some additional stuff at the end. I went on YouTube. Of course, I learned how to make transitions. All right, let us humanize a beat. Humanizing acoustic drum patterns is relatively easy. Especially if you have a multi-sample kit. But non-multi-sample and electronic kits can be tricky sometimes. When I think of humanizing a beat, I normally don't think of just faking human performance. But that is not my intention. Most of the time, I rather mean adding certain characteristics to your beat, typical to human performance. There is always a human standing behind electronic beats. Well, maybe not anymore. With this deep learning and stuff. Maybe in the future you can adopt a beat as a pet. I want to have a pet beat. I'll start from scratch. I'll push kit, make sure that my clip is just four beats long, set my BPM to 76, and I'm good to go.
I will now dial in my backbone. I'll first work on my backbone, play with velocities, micro timing and chance. Then I'll do the fills and go through the same process again, play with velocities, micro timing and chance. Then I'll add some timbral variations and put my beat in space by simply using a delay reverb combination. Then I'll do some additional black magic with pan and envelopes. D, T, C, T, S, plus plus, dynamics. I want to accent the first and the third hi-hat notes. So I'll set their velocities to 127 and 115. The second and the fourth hi-hat notes must be quiet, so I'll set their velocities to 40. I want my snare to be punchy and loud, so I'll set its velocity to 127. The first kick 120 and the last kick 127. The rest is around 60. Timing. Deluge allows you to nudge individual notes left and right by tiny increments. I can nudge notes by 1 12th of a step. So, I will nudge my second hi-hat note, let's say by 4 micro steps to the right, and my fourth hi-hat note by 3 micro steps to the right. I'll nudge my snare by 1 micro step to the right, my second kick by 1 micro step to the left, and my last kick by 2 micro steps to the right. Bravo. This is so modern and fashionable. Good. Chance. In this beat, I don't want anything to be happening 100% of the time. So I'll set chance for every individual note to, let's say, 90. For some, 85. I'll now do the fills. I'll first dial in one hi-hat note, set its velocity to 40, then I'll fill in the rest. I will also fill my snare line and this time I'll just make sure that it does not overlap with my kick. This must sound horrible. Dynamics for fills. I'll now go and randomize fill velocities. Just a bit. Set them between 30 and 40. Timing for fills. I also randomly nudge my fills to the right by 1, 2 or 3 micro steps. And finally, I'll give every fill note 30 to 35% chance. Okay, so we're done with dynamics, timing and chance for our backbone and our fills. It's time for timbre. I'll select my hi-hat, push shift, frequency, random, and randomize my low pass filter cutoff frequency by very little, let's say 10. 50 is the maximum. I'll do the same for my snare. Shift, frequency, random. Let's set it to 4. You might not hear it if you don't know what to listen to. It's listen 4. I should have said listen 4. Not 2. 4. I must now redo the entire episode. Yes! I did it. Now I'll remember. You might not hear it if you don't know what to listen to. Four. But it does make a little difference. Okay, space. I'll select my hi-hat, push my delay button, set delay time to something really tight, going for the slapback effect. Set amount to really low. Done. I'll then set my room size to, let's say, two. 50 is the maximum. I want a small room. And also dampen it as much as I can. Then I'll add some reverb to my hi-hat. Same goes for the snare. Now it's time for additional black magic. Let's randomize envelope release. I'll select my hi-hat, push shift, envelope release, random, and crank it up all the way to, let's say, 45. This means that some notes will be very short, some will be close to the original length, and then everything in between. I'll make my snare shorter a little bit, set so its release to, let's say, 8. I'll then add one more reverse snare for sliding into the punch and set its probability to 45. 
Also, my hi-hat is a bit too loud, so I'll volume it down a bit. Finally, I will animate my hi-hat pan, randomize it just a bit, let's say by 10, so that it dances left and right around the center and not in the center. We could go ahead and sculpt this beat forever, but this sounds pretty acceptable already. It is a quick example to demonstrate the workflow. You can achieve impressive results if you spend time with it. If you remember the acronym DTCTS and some additional stuff and go through every letter when you humanize your drums, you'll pretty much make sure that you've done almost everything you could to humanize it properly. Now, there are many different approaches you can adopt when working with statistical models. My friend Balint and I, by the way, this is Balint, I'm Balint. We thought of putting together a small program that would take in existing recordings of different grooves, analyze them and generate statistical models so that you could use them in live with your deluge, etc. But then I thought, even if we can make it, it's kind of boring. It is so much more entertaining to do it by hand. For me, at the end of the day, the process is as important as the outcome. Can you even say that? Is that professional? I'm kidding. Do you also rap in the shower? Thank you so much for watching this video. If you enjoyed it, please help my channel grow by hitting thumbs up and subscribing. See you in the next video.